shoe fly, don't bother me. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about another parasitic wasp, and this one is known as the fly exterminator. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy. I'm really excited about it, and I'm also really excited to use these in our garden because we have a huge fly problem. Let's go. Bad bugs, bad bugs, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad bugs, bad bugs. All right, what is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. As I said, in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the very beneficial insect, at least to me, the fly exterminator. Now, these fly exterminators were supplied by Nature's Good Guys as part of our Good Bug series. I hope you guys are really enjoying this episode and uh, really enjoying the series, I should say, because in this episode, we're gonna talk about this insect because uh, here in our homestead, we have an incredible fly presence. Now. I don't know about you, but flies are one of the most annoying insects. Now, they don't really plague our, our garden as much as they plague me. Now, when I'm out here and it's hot and I'm sweaty, they're flying around my face, they're buzzing in my hair, they're just so incredibly obnoxious. And while that might seem like a first world problem, if you're someone that has animals like horses uh, or, or uh, your goats or sheep or any type of livestock, they can be a really serious problem and they can, flies can bring in a lot of nasty diseases and, uh, and illnesses to your animals and your livestock. And so they're very beneficial on a farm, but they're also really great in a garden because um, from everything that I've read, they can be very effective even on a small homestead like this that just has a fly problem. Because we're so close to the water, the problem is the flies breed in really wet conditions. And so because we're so close to the water, we have an incredible fly, uh, fly problem. If you leave your windows open for even five, 10 minutes, you're gonna have three or five flies in your house. Every single year, you can count on it. If you leave your doors open or you have kids like we do, <laughs> you leave the kids, leave the, leave the door open, and it's one of those things where it's like, you're either in or you're out. The problem is, in that split second where those kids don't know if they're inside or outside, all it takes for those flies to come in, and then you have flies in your house and in your food. They're the most annoying thing in the world, and I could go on and on, but I'd rather go on and on about these insects. So we're gonna talk about how to apply them in your garden and what they can do for you. All right, so these parasitic wasps here are really simple to use in the garden. Now we talked in the last episode about parasitic wasps and how they can control things like your tomato hornworms and your cabbage moths and stuff. Well, these parasitic wasps specifically seek out your fly larvae. And so they're vastly different, but they can still be used exactly the same way in the garden. And so what you wanna do is you wanna get these little bags here. They're actually supplied by Nature's Good Guys and they come with the uh, these uh, these fly exterminator packages. Now, this package has 10,000 fly exterminators in here. And what these uh, what this contains is essentially some wood chips to keep them dry, and also uh, the, um, the fly exterminator larvae. Now, what we're simply gonna do is we're going to open them up. We're gonna open them up and put them inside of the bags. Now, the reason why we're putting them inside of the bags is because of the fact that birds chickens, other animals absolutely love the larvae. So it's gonna keep them safe so that they don't get eaten because there's no, no worse thing than just giving, your, giving your, uh, your hard earned money to the birds. So I don't wanna be like Mary Poppins here and feed the birds for a tuppence a day. I'd rather control my garden or control the, the flies in my garden. So we've dumped a bunch into these bags here and then all we're going to do is simply staple them shut and then once the fly, uh, once the, uh, the fly exterminator larvae hatch and become an adult, they can fly out of these holes, no problem at all. So um, it's just gonna hold them, keep them safe so that a hungry bird can't peck at them and get to them. All right, so just how many fly exterminators do you need for your property? Well, that kind of corresponds to the type of problem or the type of host that you might have. So the host for flies is actually your animals and your livestock. Now the host on a homestead like this could be, could be dogs in the area, it could be cats in the area. It could be just the fact that the environment allows for it. So you might have to kind of do some guessing to see how many you might need. But a good rule of thumb is for small animals like your ducks and your chickens, for each animal, you need about 100 fly exterminators to control the problem. Now for something like a medium sized, like a sheep, or a, you know, a dog or a cat, those medium sized animals need about 500 fly exterminators per animal. And then for larger animals like cows and uh, you know, big hefty animals like that, 
Those need about a thousand fly exterminators per animal. Now, the great thing is that fly exterminators are a parasitic wasp, but they don't travel very far at all. Once they find a host, they will simply stay in the area. They're very close to home uh, parasitic wasps. They won't fly very far, and that's because they stay near their host. And so, really, the best place to release these is right where you have a problem. In and around your home, um, in and around a barn or in a, like, uh, a kennel, places like that where the flies are very prevalent, um, especially places where animals typically will, will you know, poop. Uh, so underneath a tree where a lot of birds will be pooping is also a great spot in the garden. Um, places if you have like a lot of cats in the area, around your raised beds where there might be a lot of cat, uh, cat scat, stuff like that. <laughs> cat scat, stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm having a great day in the garden. That just made my day even better. Uh, so uh, yeah, so just places where there's going to be kind of a food source for flies. The flies are, they, they have that symbiotic relationship with those animals, and then the parasitic wasps use the host, the host's host, right? So you wanna put the parasitic wasps where the problem is going to be. And they're very simple to use in the garden. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it's a shorter one, but it's a really simple one. Um, there's not a whole lot to it. You don't need to put out a food source for them. Just like in our last parasitic wasp episode, you know, they're not attracted to flowers. They're not a really, they don't really need water. They have such a short life expectancy that they hatch, they find a host, they, you know, they, they do the deed with a mate, they sting the host, and then they die. It's that simple. And so um, it's not really something that needs to be overcomplicated. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have a fly problem, let me know in the comments box down below. I'm someone, I have literally used fly paper. It's so unsightly, I know. But I have used fly paper for years because of how bad the problem is around our house. And they're just so annoying. And fly paper is maybe equally annoying. I don't really like it and it looks terrible. So I'm really excited to try these out. And I'll definitely give you guys updates on how these work in our garden. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care.